everybody set? Yes, we just have an issue with our You set? Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Would everyone please stand for a salute to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Terry, notice of public statement. <clears throat> yes, Mayor, take notice that this liquor hearing being conducted by the Mayor and Council, also known as the Licensing Authority, on this 22nd day of May 2017, has been advertised and posted in accordance with Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, and in New Jersey, Administrative Code 13, colon 2 7.5. Roll call. Councilpersons Buchanan. Here. Grillo. Here. Kilpatrick. Here. Lembo. Here. Melendez. Here. Novak. Here. Okay, uh, the normal procedure in a liquor license hearing is for the borough attorney and for special counsel to run the meeting at this time. I'm going to uh, turn the meeting over to our borough attorney, Michael DuPont. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, Ms. Schaefer and Mr. Reel, uh, just to go over some of the documents that... You do need to read that. Okay. Uh, hearing, uh, this is a hearing uh, on an objection received for the place-to-place -place transfer at PRCL 1219-33-043-005 Snookers LLC to locate to 960 Route 90 South and a waiver of Ordinance 6-5.8. Just to uh, make sure that everyone has all the documents, we have the application for transfer. We have correspondence of July 6, 2016 from Snookers. We also have uh, attachments uh, there for the business plan that's attached there. We have Route 9 Associates LLC, I believe, uh, objection. We also have correspondence dated May 16th from uh, Mr. Uh, Reel uh, to the borough clerk. We have an analysis of the application by Snookers LLC for a waiver from Section 6-5.8 of the chapter. Uh, six by James Miller, New Jersey Planner, License 1755, dated March 6, 2017. We have also correspondence dated January 23rd and an analysis report from Global uh, Car, Car Graphics, LLC. And we also have a map of the Borough of Sayreville, New Jersey Plenary License Conference map. And then we have correspondence dated May 11, 2017 by Mr. Adonisio, which encloses a letter to, my, to the undersigned dated December 29, 2013, a Sayreville incident report dated April 8, 2014, a Sayreville Pol uh, Police Department incident report again dated March 20, 2014, and a place-to-place -place transfer resolution 2013-69 dated February 25, 2013. And that is the extent of all the documents in, in the borough's file. Correct, Mr. Reel, Ms. Schaefer? That's, that's all I'm aware of, Council. Okay, thank that's you. Okay. And so now we're here uh, really for two issues, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong. And the first issue is whether or not the, uh, the transfer um, should occur. And then the second issue is if there's any and all uh, conditions uh, whether the transfer, if it's accepted, should be placed on th this license here, correct? Is right. That we, sh we should just add it also whether or not there's going to be a waiver of the distance restriction, which okay. I think is one of the key issues Alrighty. before the council this evening. Ms. Schaefer, it's your, your it's My show way. right now. So, um, as you know, this application is to transfer from a pocket to this location, 960 Route 9 South, as Councillor indicated. Many documents are before you. Assuming you've read them, we're going to ask the applicant to add what he wants to add to those documents and, and to have his expert certified to those documents um, in order to streamline the process so we don't keep you here all night. We're going to give him an opportunity. We will. We do have counsel for the objector also here who may want to ask some questions of the expert and may have some, <clears throat> we'll have some additional information from his witnesses. Um, just so that we're clear on this, counsel, if you decide to grant the waiver, you need to make sure that we make findings of all the, the requirements of, of your ordinance 658. And we'll go through these. We also have the police chief here who will tell you what his opinion is on this application, what conditions he might be concerned about if you grant it. And he'll, I'll also take him through the ordinance and have him indicate his opinion as to what elements of the ordinance are implicated by this. I'm now going to call upon Mr. Reel to uh, speak on behalf of the applicant. Good evening, uh, Mayor, members of council. For the record, Samuel Real Jr., Helmer Conley, and Castman on behalf of the applicant Snookers. Um, the ABC Council's uh, recitation is accurate. Uh, what we have is we have three witnesses for you this evening. We have the managing member of Snookers, 
uh, Bryant Mitchell, who just briefly can tell you what it is he plans to do at that location. Uh, we then have uh, Stephen Fernandez, and Mr. Fernandez is out of the University of South Florida. It's a, uh, he is a GIS mapping expert. Uh, what we've done is we've taken your ordinance by way of your, uh, what we call uh, proximity ordinances. Uh, we've taken that ordinance and have compared it. Uh, Counselor, yes. your stenographer is here. Let me get her set up. Over Stenog there, young lady, there's a chair for you. Terry, wherever you I think there's a chair and a plug. Will that, will that work for you? Yes. Okay. If you want to wait till okay. your stenographer is set up. Take your time. Everybody gets lost on occasion. Hey, Cap, is there a plug over there? Thanks. Just, just to recap, we, we have three witnesses. We have Bryant Mitchell, uh, who's the managing member of the LLC, who's going to briefly describe what he proposes to do at the, at the location that we um, request the, the license be cited to. Additionally, Mr. Fernandez, who's going to come in and basically do uh, his testimony is, is we've uh, taken your ordinance, your proximity ordinance, we've compared it to your zoning map and your overlays to determine whether, in fact, there are any locations in the municipality that you can, in fact, cite any license to. And then finally, we have Jim Miller. Uh, Jim Miller is a, uh, a professional planner licensed in the state of New Jersey uh, who's going to address the conditions in your ordinance. So if there are no questions from council at this point, depending on uh, whether ABC council is ready to go, I would call Mr. Bryant. You good? Okay. Ms. Schaefer, have you, have you accepted the you, qualifications of the expert up. witness? I'm sorry. The expert is qualified. Okay, I'm just, without having to go through the uh, expert witness qualifications, I just asked Mr. Schaefer if she's accepted them. She said she has. Okay, I, I appreciate we're that. With Brian, so. yeah. We're starting with, with no. Mr. Mitchell. Come on over. All right, Mr. Mitchell, are you associated with Snookers? I'm the sole managing member of Snookers LLC. All right, and it's Snookers that is making the application for the place-to-place -place license transfer, correct? That's correct. All right, and where do you propose actually to cite the license, the address? 960 Route 9 South. All right, and in the nature of that particular location, what is it you propose to operate there by way of a business operation utilizing the license? Now, just a real, um, council does have before them the entire application under business plan, so, yeah, well, he can talk about it a little bit. It might be a good idea just to see if council has any additional questions about that. If they want, Mr. Mayor, council, if you want to go through what you've already got before you, we certainly I, th I think I think the mayor and council have, have um, yeah, just, uh, you guys are going to have to share a mic because uh, okay. Terry can't um, Sorry. hear it. So I guess the question is, is that I, the without going through all the documents that are um, before us, we've read it. We know that it's a, a pool hall that you want to do, and uh, we also know that um, you know there's certain requests. So maybe without going into great detail and reiterating your business plan that we all had uh, for a couple of weeks now, I think um, that uh, you just kind of give us some salient points to, to help the, the borough, the mayor and council. Reader's Digest version. Thanks. In the Reader's Digest version, what do you propose to operate at the location? I propose to operate a billiards hall. Um, a small pub and grill. As far as the billiards hall is concerned, I don't know if you guys know, Middlesex County is actually one of the uh, strongest places as far as billiards players. We've won national championships. 
throughout the amateur leagues and you know when we go to um, inter international championships we tend to win those as well uh, somewhere in the top five also some of the uh, top players in the world come to this area to actually compete against each other okay. and you currently have a lease snookers has a lease with a landlord that's correct. And the landlord is aware of the operation that you propose to put in that unit, correct? He is very aware. Okay. All right. If there are any mayor, members of council, if there are any questions, I would yield to that. The rest of it is by way of the business plan, which I believe has been submitted. Does anyone from the mayor and council have any questions of this uh, particular witness? No questions. Okay. Does Mr. Andendio have any questions? I do. May I come forward? Sure. Yes. Make sure you uh, have a microphone, Mr. Andendio. You may speak loud, but the, uh, the clerk um, needs to pick it up. I'd like to use this table if it's okay. Sure. Just grab that microphone. Uh. There you go. Thank you. Mr. Mitchell, I represent the uh, opposition side of this particular application. You understand that? Absolutely. Okay. And for the record, it's James. Just identify your name, Mr. Edmund. For the record, it's James G. Adonisio from the law firm of Renick Adonisio, Papp, and Kazaza. And you represent? Bourbon Street. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Mitchell, do, can you break down for us the size of the 8,000 square foot uh, space that you're going to be uh, using? Roughly, sure. Yeah. How much is, is going to be billiards and how much is going to be the bar? It's 8,230 square feet total. Um, as far as the pool hall is concerned, it is about 6,000 square feet. You're looking at about 1,200 square feet of uh, roughly of the pub area. And then what you're looking at is the rest is the kitchen and grill and back offices. <coughs> Were you familiar with the previous operation that was conducted at that location? Was I familiar? Yes. Okay. Were you involved in that operation in any way, shape, or form? I was involved with the pool hall solely. <coughs> So you were uh, involved with the uh, red zone establishment, is that correct? That is incorrect. Wasn't that the name of the location that was given the liquor license transferred some uh, years ago in 2013 in February? I, I, I'm going to yield to ABC Council, but this is a place-to-place -place transfer application. This is not a qualification for a person-to-person. -person. I would respect and if, and if we're going to revisit that, I suggest that's inappropriate. You beat me to the punch. I was about to get up and say the same thing. What was conducted um, at the location prior to this application is not before council. They're aware of the red zone. Uh, it was a nightclub. This is a different use. And the subject of this application is the proposed use, and it's a place to place. It's not a person. It's not an issue about the person or the conduct of the prior. Mr. Schaefer, I, I respectfully disagree. It wasn't a nightclub. In fact, this council heard testimony over three years ago, and at that time, it was completely understood that it was going to be a pub and it was going to be a billiards hall. And what developed was a nightclub, which I have objected to on many occasions, and it's before the council in terms of my objection letters that were presented to Mr. And I, DuPont. And, and I think that there are certain conditions, right, that were on the, that, that, that uh, license uh, previously. I think now, Mr. Adnizio, if you could kind of narrow your I will. objections to the uh, pool hall, pub, and grill that is proposed. Well, the real question I want to ask Mr. Bryan has to do with his credibility. Do you remember the police coming to the establishment red zone uh, back in... Uh, March 24th, 2014, Mr. Mitchell? I, I, I guess this is not a qualification for holding a license. This right. is a place-to-place -place application. If, if this was an issue as to qualification and as to events that happened back in 2013, 14, or 15, Mr. Real, it should I'm have not, been a challenge I, at the time Real, to the Superior Court. If you just let me, um, I think Mr. Ms. Schaefer has described the position that I'm taking, and that is I think if Mr. Ed Nuzzi would just concentrate on the proposed use rather than a prior uh, violation of the um, uh, prior owner, that would be great. Uh, so right now, Mr. Mitchell is, is proposing a pool hall, pub, and grill. Mr. DuPont, uh, I think anytime anybody testifies in front of any judicial system or any council, credibility comes into play. And you'll remember three and a half years ago when I stood before the council and my client had a objection to the previous owner mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure there was not going to be any live entertainment yeah and i think i think and that, that was taken care of but in I this particular this, context i think this mayor and council know of the, the history yeah. of the prior use matter of fact you've attached the the exhibits they're well aware of it their their knowledge is there so i think uh, if we can just concentrate on the present that would be great all right what i'm trying to find out very simply is whether or not you had an ownership interest in that bar back in 2013 that's either a yes or a no and, and i'll ask one follow-up question 
I would respectfully disagree. He's the man that's going to be running the operation, and he's the gentleman well, that's going to have to comply he, with the I, ordinance. I, and I want to find out whether or not this individual had an ownership interest, because if he did... That's a legitimate question. Mr. So, Mitchell, did you have an ownership interest in the club? No. All right. Do you remember the police came to your place in March of 2013? Strike that. Well, he didn't have an ownership interest, so it's, it wasn't his. Well, I understand that. But there was a police investigation in terms of the conduct going on in the bar uh, by one of the police officers here of Saraville. Mr. Yeah, Adnizio, right, that's all before the and, council. And we, They've seen it. That's are, not. Have, I'm sorry, Mike. We, sorry, Mary. Go ahead. We have that before us. The mayor and council have read that. They're very, very, very well aware. Can I ask one more question? Yes. Did you lie to the police when they came to that bar back in 2014 and stated that you were the owner, the current owner? That, yes or no? I, I'm going to object. And, uh, okay. I'm going to object so, to that. I mean, this is not. And Mr. Real, I understand your objection. Mr. Adnizio. There have to be some limits here. Mr. Adnizio, do you have any, any uh, further questions of the testimony? And remember, his testimony was very short. All he's proposing is a pool hall, pub, and grill. Do so you have any questions? I just want to make sure that this individual who stated to the police department that he was the current owner in 2014 and continually violated this borough's ordinance, which was very difficult to enforce based upon my letters. And on my client almost had to hire me to file an order to show cause in order to shut down that live entertainment. He said he was the owner. That makes him responsible back then. And I say to myself, if he lied to the police back then, how does this council know that he's going to be truthful to his words if you add the same conditions today as you did three and a half years ago, which were not followed by that applicant? Uh, Councilor sure Mayor, that's our police department is perfectly capable yep. of enforcing the right, ordinance. Mr. Your, the police department will certainly have an opportunity to discuss any enforcement or conditions. I have no further questions at this time. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Ed. Real quick, if I said I was the owner, I was the owner of the pool hall, which subleased from the red zone. Okay. That's it. Yeah, I know. Mr. Uh, Real, your next witness? Would be Mr. Fernandez. Steve. And uh, Mr. Fernandez has already been accepted. The credentials as are next accepted. Okay. And Mr. Mr. Fernandez, you've been retained by Snookers to do a review in connection with the proximity ordinance uh, that places a restriction of no licenses within 2,000 feet of each other, correct? That is correct. Could you briefly describe, because the, the council has a copy of your report as well as the photographs and your charts and exhibits, could you briefly describe for the record what it is you do in analyzing that ordinance as it relates to the zoning? the overlays and the ability to say license. And Mr. Real, just for, uh, for uh, record purposes, Mr. Fernandez is being proffered as a planner, correct? No, Mr. Mr. Fernandez is the GIS. Okay, got it here. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Stephen Fernandez. Uh, I was hired to analyze the ordinance, like uh, Skip has said. Basically what that entails is taking your zoning map, geo-referencing geo-referencing it so that it lines up with the parcel layer for Middlesex County. Once that is completed, I can identify the locations of the liquor licenses uh, obtained, by the, uh, obtained from the New Jersey uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Bureau of Beverage and Control, sorry about that. Um, and once that uh, database was downloaded, I applied that to those parcel the, the parcel layer, buffered from those parcels, and determined what parcels were had the correct zoning and also not within 2,000 feet of an existing license. And that is a parcel line to parcel line measurement. That resulted in the exhibits that you have in front of you of the seven maps. Let me ask you, let me ask you to the, let me, let me ask you to jump to the. Can you identify when you're speaking? It's Skip Rio. Thank you. Um, in the context then of your analysis, did you have occasion to review whether currently all the licenses are in conformance with the ordinance. Yes, I did. Uh, there's a conformance map in that package as well, and 20 of the 28 licenses were non-conforming. Okay. And, and the final question for you. Get the mic. Mm -hmm. the, the final question for you is, as a result of your analysis, uh, how many lots, if any, would be available to cite this license other than with a proposed location? Uh, that was in the exact numbers in my report, and thank you. And out of these maps, you know, because it, it's not an exact number of parcels, right? Because if somebody opens up, that disqualifies the future parcels from being eligible. Uh, so basically, from my maps, we determined that map three and map four were the only, uh, and maps, I'm sorry, map three, seven, and four would, would be the only locations that can uh, uh, contain a new license, or a tr I'm sorry, a transferred license. Okay. Thank you. 
Uh, any members of council or the mayor have questions? No, and your uh, just in layman's terms, exactly what is your analysis showing that that most of Saraville is not in compliance over half the licenses? And now you understand the history of Saraville. I do, I'm not the exact no. history, no, sir. Okay, the history of Cerebral is we're a factory town. Mm -hmm. We have been, it was, it was our foundation. So it started out with taverns. Most of these licenses were neighborhood taverns where the guys either had one car or no car and they could come home from their shift and they could walk down to the neighborhood tavern, have a couple of beers, play some shovelboard or pool, whatever was, was available and walk home. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of these are carryovers. Now as, as Cerebral has moved away from being a factory town to being a commuter town to New York, the taverns no longer have a viable uh, business model and, and, and it's not really that successful. But a lot of these are just carryovers from, the, from when prohibition was uh, repealed. Uh, and, and it just takes time. The other thing that Cerebral has, the, I think the state liquor license ratio is one license per 5,000 uh, 5, people or one license per 8,000 people. I'm not sure which one it is, but Cerebral has like one license per 1,000 person. So in a lot of ways, we're, we're over licensed. But again, it comes from an age where that was a common practice in the industrial corridor of the East Coast. So this is the history of Cerebral. So this doesn't surprise me uh, at all. And, and to make a case on this, you know, Cerebral is constantly, Cerebral is a living document. So as, as the time changes, so does Cerebral. So we still have neighborhoods here where there are no driveway. Mm -hmm. Across the street and up the hill, there are still homes that, that uh, ha have uh, foundations for outhouses before we add sewers, so it's part of the history. So I, I don't want anyone to be misled that somehow we're out of compliance with our own ordinances on a deliberate basis. We're, we're, we're completely in tune with who we are, what we are, where we started out, and where we're going to. And what you're saying to us is to go backwards, not forwards, if you're gonna make this argument. If I may, Mayor, nobody's suggesting that, that this has happened as a result of any active conduct. I by needed the to clear that up. Oh, I, I, I want that to be perfectly clear. It's not a question about whether, in fact, uh, that's the, the case. This is an older ordinance. Uh, this ordinance, I believe, was first introduced in 1992, if not a little. 82. Older. 82. Thank you. Um, so it's. Me, okay. I knew, it, I knew it was a while ago. At my age, anything over yesterday is old. Um, the reality is, is that um, that ordinance, and I've had a brief discussion with, with your ABC council as to um, some questions that I had about it, uh, both from my position here and it's also as an associate council to the league about, about maybe what the planning board might want to do with this in the future by way of taking a look at it. But there's no suggestion here by this applicant that this council or any previous council has done something affirmatively uh, to create this situation. It is, Mayor, as you suggest, something that has developed over time simply because of the nature of what Sayerville was. Uh, but there's no suggestion otherwise. But so, Councillor, the issue that you're trying to put before the mayor and council is that there are some limited number of sites available. I think that should be the testimony and stop there. There's nothing wrong with the ordinance. It's the Reader's, it's the reader's Digest version. The Reader's Digest version of this is that um, as a result of the ordinance, which you have every right to have, um, there are, in fact, limited places where you can put any license. You do have some licenses that I think are in pocket. Uh, this is one of them, um, and it's some, an issue that, that just popped up and we had to address for you as part of your waiver provision. All right. Okay. Can I, Thank you. Can I just say one more thing? Yes, sir. Um, I actually did think of this as well. The um, database that is provided by the Alcohol Mr. Beverage Mr. Control. Mr. Fernandez, just yeah. identify when oh, sorry, this is Steve Fernandez. Um, the database provided by the uh, Bureau of Alcohol Control only has the most recent license date. Um, so that is something I did look into. I just, I, there's no way as a private uh, firm I can get that data. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of the mayor and council? I have a question, Mr. Fernandez. You analyzed 28 sites. Uh, 
apparently the ordinance goes back to 1983, as Councilwoman Novak knew very well. That was pretty impressive, but uh, it, it's older than me, that ordinance. So I'm curious, um, how many uh, licenses have been issued since we've had this? That's what I was just referring I to. I tried to do that research. Is, but you don't know. I, I, I don't have access to that information. Not so many. And I, the, the question, Councilman, and, and again, I, I, I welcome the, the comment. It's not so many that have been issued, how many have been retired. And we've re we haven't issued any new ones. We've retired several. And, and on, on top of that, I don't believe that you've had that many transfers. Well, we have transfers every year, pretty much. Place to place? I don't know, place to place. A person, a person approach, but the, but the reciting relocation of licenses uh, is not something that happens that often. There are a Sarah lot of Sarahville is a planning challenge. It is a unique community. I've, we happen to think so also. I, I think that's a positive thing, Mayor. So. Any other council members? Question? Mr. Adnizio, yes, briefly and in response. Um, Mr. Fernandez, can you tell me, uh, in your testimony, there are three other places within the township that the license could be placed that would meet the requirements of the township ordinance? Uh, I'm sorry, repeat that question? Did you testify that there are three locations that this license could be placed that does meet with the borough ordinance besides this one? There are three possible areas, yes. Thank you. No further questions. And finally, uh, Mr. Miller. question Certainly. kind of piggybacking off of that yeah, one um, you cited areas but do we know if there's a, a building appropriate in those areas not at all okay that's yes. the one Jeff, thank you he doesn't know you can't speak for a uh, counselor I, we, we we're doing an audio and a steno which is fine you just you just need to come up and and Identify yourself for the audio portion, um, and, and then ask any question you like. Thank you. We're just trying to create a record, Mr. Adnesio. Okay. Uh, final witnesses is James Miller. Mr. Miller, you're a licensed planner in the state of New Jersey? Yes, I am. Have you reviewed the ordinance by way of its waiver provisions? I have. And you have issued a report with respect to that, correct? I did. Could you give us the Reader's Digest conclusion that you reached as a result of your analysis? Uh, in, in very short terms, uh, I looked at all the different uh, criteria that the borough applies to the waiver provision. I believe this application meets all of those criteria, and I could go through them individually, but I think you have uh, my report, which contains my uh, analysis in, in detail. So, um, What's your conclusion? My conclusion is that this application would satisfy all of the criteria for the waiver. Okay. And it's enumerated again in my, my report. Okay. It's enumerated on page 10, uh, Mayor, of the, his report dated March 6, 2017. Okay. Council, Councilman Grillo, being our resident uh, certified uh, planner, I assume you have questions. No, no, I, I think uh, Mr. Fernandez answered my questions. Any questions with the planner's findings? Uh, not at this point, no. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Any other member of the council or mayor have questions of the planner? Mr. Adnizio, do you have any uh, questions Adnizio. of this planner? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That would conclude our uh, our presentation. All right, so, Mr. Okay. Mayor, from the uh, borough's perspective, you, I'd Real. like to talk to Chief. Uh, bring up Chief Zabrowski. have you had an opportunity to look at this application? I have. And do you have an opinion as to whether or not, are you, are you familiar with the location? I am familiar with the location, but I do have a question of Mr. Mitchell, if I could. Sure. Uh, through Mr. Real or? Brian. Uh, Brian. Mr. Mi Mr. Mitchell, you gotta come up and grab a microphone. <laughs> Thank you. I, I just wanna be clear of the exact location. Is it going to be the theater and where the billiards hall previously was, or is it both, or one of each? I'm not exactly sure. I thought I was up until I read the, the um, report here. The theater, yeah. those doors are locked. There is the pool hall, and there's a section between that and the theater. Um, when there's a kitchen, and that is the only 
only part that will be used. The theater, had, there's no entrance. It's not being rented. It's not being leased. It's not being touched. But you'll be utilizing the theater for purposes of food preparation? No, the no, not at all. Um, if you remember the previous place, prime time, where there was there was a billiards hall, and then right next to it, <coughs> it was a small pub, and in the back there was the grill. We're using that part. There are actually two other doors that lead into the theater, but those doors are locked by the landlord. But will you be renting both the theater and the no, pool absolutely hall? not. Okay, so it's just a pool hall. The second question I have, uh, and I thought I knew the purpose of your business plan up until I read Mr. Real's report, uh, and, and I'm hoping you can clarify. You said 80% of the business plan will be for a billiards hall. When I read Mr. Real's report, it seemed to me that that was a ancillary issue where it was really a restaurant and pub. So they're really two different entities. So I'm trying to get a clarification as to the primary use of the building. Okay. Uh, the primary use of the building is for billiards. I play billiards. I play nationally. Uh, we go out to Vegas. We, we compete. We do a lot of things. As a matter of fact, tonight we have a playoff match as well. Um, in order to operate a billiards hall, you have to be there 80, 90 hours a week. There are no places in central Jersey or within 50 miles that actually have um, catered to the billiard players as far as alcohol or drinks or food as well. So that is why we're looking for that. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Right, so, Chief, back to the questions I had. Um, you're familiar with this location. I am. And in your opinion, is the location of an additional facility in this area, an additional licensed premises, going to have an adverse impact? on the adjacent residential areas? Possibly. Uh, something of this nature in which you have a high intensity or high volume of people in and out uh, can have issues related to quality of life as well as public safety. Issues related to uh, loitering, issues related to littering, issues related to noise, uh, issues related to um, intoxicated patrons. So it is possible. Well, so our ordinance says that the council should consider that when deciding whether or not to waive the distance requirement. Do you have an opinion as to whether or not this transfer application should be granted, and if so, whether or not the restriction should be waived? I think if this, if this application is granted, I think there are going to have to be a number of conditions set forth on this license in order to minimize or mitigate our concerns. Right, can you specify those conditions that you'd like the council to consider? Well, I don't know if I can enumerate all of those, but the, li the license that was previously there. You know what, if we could just um, let the chief expand upon his opinion. He's, he was uh, please don't anyone treat uh, the approval of this as a foregone conclusion. It, it certainly isn't. Oh, Mr. I think Mayor, I, I said if. I fully understand that, that the chief is expressing his I opinion at this juncture. Yeah, but I, but I, I don't want to go into if, oh. if, 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 right. if this happens, if that happens, let, let's talk about the, the first topic thoroughly, um, which is, okay. are, are we, we going to waive the fact? I, I still, I'm, I'm not, I was looking for two things. I was looking for uh, um, a blueprint of the hall, um, of, the, of the proposed billiard hall. I can't find it in the package. Is, no. is, is, is that there? Is the layout there? There is not a blueprint. There is, it's Skip Real. It's not a blueprint. Uh, there is a floor plan. A floor that's plan. Yes. Okay. okay. It shows 20 so, pool tables. So I think really if, if uh, Ms. Schaefer, if you can, if right the here. chief would just give his opinion as to uh, the certain adverse impacts. And then if the, if the mayor and council have uh, any questions about that impact and we reach the next conclusion, um, I think that probably would be okay, a better I think direction. He, thank you, then Mike. I think that he... Uh, responded to my first question about the location and whether it will have an adverse impact. The next question is whether or not it's an area where patrons of licensed facilities tend to congregate or consume alcoholic beverages outside. I would say they would not uh, consume alcohol beverages outside as long as there's security in the, uh, for the facility. Uh, congregate, yes. Uh, typically, people that uh, 
uh, attend or participate in these types of uh, locations will congregate out in the sidewalks or in the parking lot areas, uh, particularly to smoke or to wait for other patrons to come in, or particularly at the end of the day or end of the night when, uh, when the business is closing. All right, Chief, and you're familiar with the other two licenses that are, with, are within the 2,000 foot radius of this proposed premises? Yes. All right, and are they similar? No, they're not similar. What, so one, one is a packaged goods store? That's correct. I the believe other? it's Plaza Wine, and, right. and the other is Bourbon Street, which is an entertainment facility or premise. All right. Um, there's also a, a question under the ordinance whether or not, in your opinion, um, would the, uh, the use of this property as a billiards hall um, enhance the area? And that's more of a zoning question than a police question, but in terms of from your perspective, and regulating um, traffic throughout the community. Do you have an opinion as to whether or not this would? A billiards hall had previously um, operated successfully at that location, and I would say if that is the primary business, then I would say it would not have any adverse effect. Okay. Um, I don't have any other questions of the chief, mayor, and council. I, I did. Uh, I would like to hear from the owners of or the representatives of Bourbon Street because they had made quite a sizable financial investment in Sayreville for a number of for longer than I've been mayor. Well, and I I'd may like to get uh, their input and their opinion on uh, how they feel this would impact their business. Thank you very if much. If I may, though, before you do that, I do have a question or two for the chief, if I may. Sure, you can, you can ask it now. It's the time to ask. Chief, sorry about that. Come on up. Come back. That's quite all right. Okay. All right, chief, in the context of this particular application at Skip Realiga, because I apologize, Ms. Forbaniak's got her back to us. Um, in the context of this, if people were at any number of retail establishments, they might congregate outside, correct? It's not limited to a pool pool hall or a billiard or a, uh, a bar or a restaurant, correct? Correct. Okay. So that in and of itself is not a, a negative. It's just a practical reality of any retail operation. Well, the practical reality is that when you're having a pub, tavern, or restaurant of that type of nature, you tend to have uh, different people, more people congregating than, let's say, someone coming in and out of a shopping center or a convenience store. Okay, and you have that at any number of restaurants in the community that aren't licensed? Yes. Okay, so it's not, it's not, a, it's not a, a criteria, no, strike that, it's not a situation that is unique to licensed beverage entities, it's any restaurant, any type of facility like that? Yes, I think okay. you're correct. All right, now, you know, in the context of this, um, you said that there could be, could be a detriment. If I understand your, your earlier testimony, you said that, well, it could, it, there could be a detriment. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Is that detriment in your mind controllable by conditions? Yes. What conditions would you suggest be placed on this transfer to address what your concerns may be as to you know, the detrimental I impact? But I think it's, I I think it's relevant. Okay. No, it's not relevant. We, 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 we're still talking about whether or not we're going to allow you to, to set up business there. I guess so to start talking about conditions is not relevant yet. That's part two. I think, I think what we can do is, is if we can uh, just to ask the chief, he had a limited testimony as to criteria. So I'm sure Ms. Schaefer will be um, asking him further questions, but I know that um, we have just right at this, the testimony the chief has asked right now is simply just the criteria, what has to be met. And he, made, he gave opinions as to the specific criteria. So maybe Mr. Real, if you could just limit your questions as to the testimonies asked. And then if the chief has further questions or further testimony as to potential conditions, I think that would probably be helpful. I, I respectfully disagree with counsel, but it's your, your call, your, uh, your counsel to the, to the governing body, to the issuing authority. I think that if in fact there are detriments, and it was a rather broad comment, it wasn't specified or, or addressed to any particular detriment, um, the question well, is, is what conditions does he believe would address those uh, but, the, but, that, but that testimony wasn't given. He said he answered the question, yes. All right, so there well was no let, me, let me ask this question, then, if I may. What specific detriments do you identify as a part of this application? And I think, well, Mr. the Chief's already asked, uh, or he, he had some specific questions, and that is the quality of life issues. Did you not testify as to the quality of life issues that potentially could be affected by the, the issuance of this license? Yes, I did. And that included 
if I wrote them down properly, you know, loitering, intoxication uh, outside, uh, it affects the quality of life litter. I didn't write them all down. I talked pretty quickly there. I'm not as good as the uh, no, that's report a, reporter. That's a good outline, yes. Okay. As limited, fine. Mr. Adnizio. No questions. Okay. Mr. Adnizio, I would like to hear from your clients what they perceive to be the financial impact to their business as they've been here 30 years? Since 1985. Okay. It's 32 years. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to call to the witness stand Anthony Spolaro. <clears throat> Anthony, uh, it is my understanding. Out first, good evening, Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the council. Anthony, can you please tell me your association with uh, Route 9 Associates, LLC? Yes, I'm the owner of Route 9 Associates, LLC, doing business as Bourbon Street. And how long have you been the owner? Uh, roughly now three and a half years, almost four years. Okay, and three and a half years ago, they passed the ordinance, the township passed an ordinance uh, permitting a, uh, a pool hall and a pub to be placed in this exact location. Isn't that correct? Uh, correct. All right. Before they closed down, did you suffer any adverse consequences of that operation as it existed for the years that it was opened? Yes. Can you please identify that for the mayor and the city council? Sure, thank you. Uh, first, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when uh, I did this place-to-place, person-to-person -place, uh, -person transfer with my dad and I uh, bought the license, you know, one thing he always told me was having a liquor license in New Jersey is a privilege. So I've worked very, very hard for him before he retired and continue what I do to protect my patrons that come into the bar, um, my bartenders, my staff. I make sure everybody's tip certified. They do classes regularly. Um, I hire extra security so we have no issues. I have a very good clientele that comes in. And the business has changed over the years where I'll do a lot of bachelorette parties and bachelor parties and you know, so forth and whatnot. So I always am aware of when people are drinking and you know, could always lead to problems. When the sports bar and red zone came along and we had both places next to each other, it became nothing but a heartache and a disaster for me. And the reason why was I had underage people trying to come into my place which my security guards would have to escort them back out. I had numerous fights in the side parking lot of Red Zone and issues, screaming matches, that my security staff would have to come outside, try to separate from, our, from their, from their uh, side to our side. It became nothing but a headache. And I sat with Brian and Kevin at the time. Brian came to me, and, I, and believe me, I want Brian to make a great living, have businesses, make money, absolutely. But there has to be a point where I need to be protected. And that's part of this reason of why we have this ordinance, is to protect people like me and these businesses where you have groups of people, young kids, where it's just, you know, going to get out of hand for drinking and driving. It's a problem that could happen. And I already work hard enough for my attorneys, no offense, liquor liability insurance, uh, workers' comp insurance. You know, it's not easy today's times to, you know, to make money. So I don't want to struggle going forward and worrying that, God forbid, somebody comes over drunk and walks into my place, doesn't even have one beer, leaves, gets into a car accident, and the last thing that they show on the video camera that they left my establishment and didn't even have an alcoholic beverage because they escorted them out or whatnot. So in my opinion, I want to be a little bit more protected. I met with Brian. I sat with Brian and Kevin at the time. They said to me, Anthony, we're going to do cross promotion. We're going to work together. We're going to bring in the Gordon Ramsay chefs from Hell's Kitchen. It's going to be a beautiful restaurant. That restaurant turned into a restaurant, to a sports bar, to girls dancing on the bar, to live bands, to DJs, to Hot 97. Incidents that my attorneys have that you guys would have on file. That, that's something that I don't need to... To, to, to work so hard to, you know, for my business to, to be potentially shut down or for me to be out of a job, you know? So, I, you know, I want you to take into consideration of these places so close now, it didn't work back then. It didn't. We had issues. The chief of police and the police department, I mean, when, at the time, De with Dougie Spraggs, and I've talked to the police, and, and they have had incidents there in, in the side. And I don't want to make those incidents become my incidents anymore. So that's why I'm concerned. And I hope that you understand that. And I've never done this before, so I'm kind of speaking from my heart okay. just to let you know okay. of how I feel about owner. it. Mr. Solaro, uh, there's been a representation by the applicant, Bryant Mitchell, who's going to be the owner of this license through an LLC, trading as Snookers, that he has your permission for this place-to-place -place transfer. Is that accurate? 
I, he's never had my permission at all. I know I sent a, I seen a letter that he sent to the township clerk uh, uh, it stated that I would, I'm not gonna oppose that. I told him from the beginning when he met with me last year and he said to me, hey, I'm gonna do a billiards. It's gonna be a 500 square foot, just a couple of pool halls. Then I got his business plan and it was 8,000 square feet, pub, snookers. I, I, I don't believe him. He, he, he wasn't a man of his word when he told me he wasn't going to have no live entertainment. Then it started with, like I told you, the bands, the radio, the Hot 97. That, that, that's, I can't, I don't believe him. So that's why it brings me today of why I got to hire a, a law firm and pay money and, you know, try to protect myself this time because I'm not going to be so foolish as I was in the beginning. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Oh. Um, sir, you're, you're the managing member of the uh, of, of Yeah, I'm the facility? owner. You're the owner. Correct. Okay. And by way of underage, there are other bars in the community, correct? There's, yes, there's other okay. bars at local, yes. So the fact that you may have someone come in who's already intoxicated is not something that's specific or solely because there might be another licensed premises next door, is it? No, but I like my chances better if they're coming from say brick house rather than jumping over the little railing coming into my bar after they just had 15 shots of tequila and five beers and do you have an, actually any hard evidence of, of that occurring that somebody had 15 shots and beers no, i don't have evidence of who's who drank what but i have evidence of bouncers that i could bring for testimony that stated people that were intoxicated coming over from next door into my place uh that i would not allow in uh Patrons from next door at that time yelling across at my customers who were outside smoking a cigar or a cigarette. Uh, I, could, I could definitely, uh, and I, I have a manager that was my cousin at the time when he worked for my dad that could also testify to that as well if you need him as well. And, and I assume that n at no time did any of your patrons do the same thing the other way around. No. Us, right? Okay. Well, that's good that your patrons are, are so much better than the other patrons. No, that's uh, not true. Let me, let me ask you this question. So you really haven't suffered any economic loss, though, because you haven't told us that you suffered an economic loss as a result of all this. Your loss is what you believe to be inconvenience. Is that accurate? What, what, well, when you say economic loss, uh, by me hiring extra staff and extra security when that place was open, would that be considered of me coming out of pocket more to protect myself? Because I had one security guy that I would have at the door. I had a one, when Red Zone was available, I had four or three or four at that time because of so much chaos going back and forth from that place. And not even that, at 2 o'clock when the place would close, 2 a.m., they had still people inside the bar that were, wouldn't even exit it. it. It took them almost an hour to get out of the bar, so it became more of an issue for me as my bartenders were leaving after cleaning up the bar and counting tips. Their drunk, their drunk customers sat yelling across to my girls, making them feel uncomfortable. So it was, it was you know, a little, little bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the economic loss that he tried to explain was the increase in operating expenses associated with the neighbor. Well, how about if I ask him and Thank you. instead of having you testify? I didn't testify. I'm just trying uh, to see let me, if, let if me I can ask understand it. So if there is no live entertainment at this new operation, and if they have security in place to monitor what their patrons are doing by way of either actions, conduct, or um, their drinking, those concerns you have evaporate, don't they? My number one thing at the time, four, three, four years ago, no, now, was, sir, I'm asking what, you about and now, now, was not, no not entertainment, years, no not. live entertainment. Even till, as I stand, no live entertainment. I don't want no live entertainment. But when we had this condition in place, Mr. Mitchell, who was the owner, who identified me as the, uh, was the owner, he, he didn't abide by that. Would you like to answer my question? Can you repeat your question? Could I have the question read back, please? Well, I feel that there'll always be concerns of people hopping from their place to my place. So that would be more of a concern for me. So as they're exiting, having a cocktail or whatnot, coming to my, coming to my establishment, you know, that too, it, it, we're too close. We're, we're, we're neighbors. We're right next door. We could throw a rock at each other. So your testimony is that you don't want patrons leaving 
any other licensee walking a short nope, distance. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. Sir, can I finish the question at least? Yeah, but I've never done this before, so I feel like the way you're trying to explain it is no, a little is, is, no, is different. Guys, all we gotta do, remember, he's just gonna ask questions. So just ask him to the answer to the best of your ability. You got a competent, capable counsel next to you, so just answer the question. I don't know, what was my question? She's got, uh, I can't hear you when you speak, so you're, you're going to need the microphone, uh, Miss, the stenographer. I can't hear you uh, from where you are. You're soft-spoken. Oh, gotcha. Your testimony is that you don't have, want patrons leaving any other licensed establishment and walk the short distance to you. Can you say it one more time? Your testimony is you don't want patrons leaving other licensed establishments walking a short distance across to you. Okay, my testimony would be not for other patrons in local taverns, the ta just a place next door to me. What's the difference between somebody at a bar two blocks down or three blocks down and a place next door by way of their patrons coming to you and, and taking advantage of what you offer? What's the difference? The, di the difference, I, in my opinion, is when you have an establishment close to mine like that and these people into drinking, intoxicated, there's more of an incident to happen being so close together from, their, from that place to my pl and my place. So I can't speak for somebody coming from another establishment, but I'm just going by the history that I'm familiar with of people that were drinking at that place and coming into my place and how what I had to do to try to help prevent any incident to happen. Okay. What I'm so you've never had anybody from another establishment come to your place, Bourbon Street, uh, intoxicated? Uh, yes, I have. Okay, so, so that's really not an, a concern that's specific to... Yes, it's a, always a concern. Oh. They, they, that, that person that came from the other place that was intoxicated... What I did was I would tell my managers never to let them go in a car. They, always, they have my approval to get an Uber or a taxi that I pay for to get them to where they need to go. So I don't even serve them when they come into my place intoxicated. Okay. And none of your patrons ever left there intoxicated and went to the old operation either. Is that accurate? That's pretty accurate. Okay. Uh, again, let me come back to this. Other than, than what you're telling us of what you did three years ago or two years ago or even, even a year ago. In the context of this particular application, what if there is no live entertainment, if there's control of, of the premises such as uh, intoxication, intoxicated patrons, and what's your economic loss? Goes back to the same thing that I stated before. When he was involved in the past with the no live entertainment, he, he didn't listen to any of it. He had live entertainment, live DJs, live bands, live entertainment, girls on the bar, I, that, that's what he had. So How about an economic my, loss. How about answering my question as to now? I understand you've told us four times. Well, if, he, well, if he's selling a beer. Yes. Tell me about now. No, yeah. uh, you know, you know, again, I think that question was answered earlier on. I think he, he maybe not elegantly, eloquently, but he did mention that he increased his operating expenses associated with security, associated with uh, hiring other bartenders, associated with other employees he had to hire. So I, you know, although he, he has not maybe quantified it, he certainly has expressed um, a worry of, of an increased operating expenses, and that's what his history has shown with uh, the prior uh, use. Okay. Right. I have nothing further. This. Thanks, Mr. Real. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Adonisio. Any further witnesses? Uh, for the record, Jim Adonisio answers no. All right, Ms. Schaefer. I think that's all we have. It's actually up to the council to, you know, the, as ABC council, we're not taking a position, obviously, one way or the other. I believe the chief has not objected and has indicated that although he sees some issues with the waiver, that uh, it's, it's certainly, chief, just so we're clear, you reviewed the application and I think you expressed a position to me as to whether this was an appropriate use of this site from your perspective, from, from a, uh, a police perspective. Yes, uh, and I don't want to get into the second issue as long as certain conditions are set forth. Right, and 
I think we discussed that if, uh, if the council and mayor and council are so inclined and you're going to grant this application, clearly some conditions should be considered if, if you decide to deny it, obviously. Yes, but Pat, I think, I think uh, what, what you need to establish is when I spoke to the, to the chief about it, he's neither for nor against. He's, his position is neutral. That's exactly right, He does not right, see mayor. this as a benefit, as either a benefit to the community or detriment to the community. He is neutral. He has no objections based on the application. Far different than, than saying, uh, you know, I don't see any problem with it. it. There's no problem with the application meeting criteria as far as ha having a liquor license. As far as waiving the transfer, my, my discussions with the chief was he, he doesn't have a position for or against. The, the, it, comply, it complies with the licensing ordinances and requirements. Well, Mr. Mayor, my understanding at this juncture is similar. Well, let's, that, let's, let's, have ask the, the let's have the chief. Let's ask the chief. Now, maybe I heard it wrong. I, uh, that, that happens from time to time at my age. I'm sorry, you're going to have to ask the question so that I, I know what I am answering. So, so Chief. It's my understanding you had no position for or against the application. You didn't see it as a benefit to the community nor a harm to the community. It merely complied with what it needed to comply with, the application. I think the, the police department's position was that we did not, uh, we were, there was not a recommendation uh, against the licensee, if, the, if that clarifies things. You get, I think you get that's our chief. role at this, at this right. stage. It's, okay. it's a neutral position. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I, I, I have a question for the chief, though, based upon that. Chief, in the context of the ordinance, the, the subsection B, is it your opinion, do you, have an, do you have an opinion as to whether the operation of snookers is going to generate inappropriate behavior as is defined in the, in the subsection. Do you have any information to suggest that that's the type of operation being proposed? Well, yes. Uh, we haven't had uh, any evidence or, or testimony on prior actions, but I would say based on prior actions, yes, I would say that there is a possibility probability of adverse reaction based on the previous business and the way it was managed. And I think that was his testimony regarding quality of life issues, if, I not, if my notes are correct. Correct. One other question, Chief. Before testifying today, have you reviewed Snooker's business plan as to how it proposes to operate? I did. Okay. And notwithstanding that review and the, and the representation set forth in there, you, you still believe that there's an, it it's runs the risk of inappropriate behavior? Anything. Quality. Remember, I think the chief was testified or testified as to as to the effect that it may have, or could have, or will have on quality of life issues, and he he enunciated those quality of life issues. All right. Then let me ask you this final question. In some respects, as it rela relates to what may happen, it's speculation on your part, correct? Well, yeah. if I if I might add, the chief has been a police officer how long, chief? Uh, Twenty nine years. And so some of that speculation is based on experience. So it's not purely speculation. Chief, based on your experience, is there still a degree of speculation in your, in your testimony tonight as it relates to what may or may not happen at that location under the business plan as presented? I think you answered as that. presented, I would say there is still a concern. Thanks. Anything else, Ms. Uh, Ms. Real? Or Mr. Uh, Real or Ms. Schaefer or Mr. Adnizio? Unless, no, I, we, have, we have nothing else from the ABC's per, uh, council's perspective. Um, if these gentlemen want to reiterate their positions for council or if council has questions of them. Yeah, I'm not, um, I don't no. think that we need to have a reiteration of positions. I think the position's pretty clear. Mr. Real, um, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I, I do have something very brief. Actually, here. It's, it's very brief. You have an ordinance that provides for a waiver. You have the, in this 2,000 foot proximity ordinance. Um, there are some questions as to the adoption of that uh, in light of some cases I've discussed with Ms. Schaefer um, as to whether it's in fact enforceable. When you do your overlay, um, you have a situation where um, there are not a lot of locations where anybody can cite any license that's currently in pocket status. 
This particular proposal is to operate a billiard hall with a pub restaurant attached. The testimony has been is that it's about 80% pool and 20% restaurant and pub. Uh, it is a substantially different operation uh, that's proposed and anticipated to be operated at that location than what was there before. Uh, I recognize the, the prior history. I'm not going to call the, the, uh, the representatives of, uh, of Bourbon Street uh, that they're wrong or they're not telling the truth as it relates to what the prior experience was. But the fact of the matter is, is that that prior experience was in the past. And this proposal by this licensee who holds this license in pocket status is to run something and operate something that is vastly different. Uh, I will tell you right now, there's no live entertainment. We have, we have communicated that to the, to the municipality. We've communicated that to the chief and to the police department. Uh, this is not the type of operation that is going to uh, generate those sort of issues. Uh, and you can see that from the business plan. I recognize that, that some of the testimony was truncated this evening. But the fact is, is that you have before you in the documents that have been presented a clear indication of what it is that's being proposed. In the context of your, of your ordinance, yes, there is a liquor store in that same strip center. Uh, and yes, it is adjacent to a non-related entertainment facility. Uh, a go-go bar, by its nature, is different. It is an on-site entertainment with dancers and booths. This is a billiard parlor with a pub and a restaurant attached in the utilization of the license. Uh, neither use is in conflict with the other. Uh, quite frankly, uh, I, I see it as a symbiotic relationship. I, I, I could see their customers mm -hmm. coming into to Snooker's and Snooker's customers going into to Bourbon Street. Uh, and yes, every licensee has the responsibility and the concern of you know, somebody coming in who's under the influence, who's uh, refused service, leaves and gets into an accident and then you're going to have to deal with ABC. And trust me, that is an issue for any number of licensees in this state. But it's not particular simply because you have an adjacent license. It is a problem generally in the practice of alcoholic beverage industry. If you're gonna have a license in this state under laws that are almost 100 years old, you're going to have these issues. It's not particular to any particular location or license. Uh, here, this is going to be predominantly a an entertainment facility, I guess, if you want to characterize it as that. Uh, it's not a primary focus of, of being a sports bar. Yeah. Uh, it's not a situation where it's going to try to compete by way of being a go-go bar. Right. Um, it is, as Mr. Miller pointed out in his report, going to enhance the strip mall because it'll fill two of the vacant units. It increases traffic into that strip mall, which may make it easier for the landlord and the owner of that property to rent the other vacant storefronts. So it, is, it does have an economic advantage to it. Um, I accept the fact that, that uh, Bourbon Street and Red Zone did not get along. I accept the fact that there were, in fact, issues in the operation of Red Zone, which is why Red Zone's not here. Snooker's is. Snooker's has acquired a license, wants to cite the license at the storefronts to operate a different operation. Um, this is not... And, and that's why I keep coming back to, you know, redredging history of 2012, 13, 14 really doesn't do much good for us in the context of what's proposed. From a planning perspective, this is a good use of that license at that location as Mr. Miller has provided. If you look at your ordinance from a planning perspective, it is an excellent application and should be approved. From a perspective of the ordinance itself, I do have some concerns as to its adoption, but that's not necessarily before you tonight. And I'd suggest that the appropriate action on the part of the council is to grant the place-to-place -place transfer application and to then determine what, if any, conditions are appropriate to attach to that license. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Real. <laughs> Mr. Adnizer, you seem to be standing for purpose or? or I do. I'd like to. Uh, respond to the closing argument, if you will, of Mr. Real. Mr. Adnizio, you're, you're eloquent. Go ahead. Well, I'm not that eloquent. Your rodeo. Here's the bottom line, Mayor and Council. Four years ago, I appeared before this Council. Four years ago, we, we uh, placed our objections on the record. Four years ago, you made a decision to grant this transfer. Four years ago, you had this owner of the establishment make representations to each and every one of you that was sitting at the time. 
and they said they would agree to the restrictions that the mayor and council would put on the license. And then within a very short time, they violated it from A to Z. First, they presented live entertainment, direct violation of your ordinance. They uh, provided bands, direct violation of your ordinance. They provided DJs, party girls, and they did not provide the proper security. You have in front of you at least one police report that indicates at one time there were 10 police cars that had to be called to that location. I asked Mr. Mitchell earlier, and I thought it was very important in terms of his credibility and the representations made before this board on this night as to whether or not he had an ownership interest. He denied it. In the police report, it clearly states when asked by the police officer in an ABC investigation whether or not he was the owner, he positively, unequivocally said that he was. I say that Mr. Mitchell was part of the past transgressions, and if this application would go forward, and if it's granted, this place-to-place -place transferred, I think Mr. Mitchell will make the same trans transgressions. I wonder to myself how a billiard hall of four years ago that went out of business is now going to be successful. What you're going to find if you pass this place-to-place -place transfer is the billiard hall is going to turn into a live entertainment establishment, which is going to be in direct conflict with the interests of my client. My client has also made clear to you the problems that he's had in the past. If it was a pizzeria, if it was a, uh, an Irish pub with a liquor license that wanted to be located in there, my guess is there wouldn't be people jumping over the fence and the need to call 10 police cars to that location to stop the activity that's going on there. I don't know anything about billiards, but it seems that billiards can draw a difficult crowd. <laughs> Furthermore, in his business model, Mr. Mitchell clearly outlines that his hope is to make it successful and then sell the place. It's right in his own handwriting or typed out version of his business model. So I say this to the council in closing. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on all of you. I think if you allow this to proceed to grant this place-to-place -place transfer, it's going to have Jim Adonisio and Mike DuPont in the Middlesex County Superior Court on an order to show cause to enforce your ordinance. And for those reasons, I'm asking that you enforce the ban on a liquor license within 2,000 feet. You have it on the books for a reason. I ask you to enforce it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, my one final comment is, is uh, having served as a municipal solicitor, is that I would urge you not um, to be compelled or misled by some threat by a litigant's counsel that they're going to drag you in front of a superior court on a this, complaint. Mr. Real, this, this counsel has been threatened before. This, this counsel so has been sure that, 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 that will not intimidate this, the well experienced and leadership uh, of this board. That being said, Ms. Schaefer, I think that concludes the, the hearing, correct? It There's does. Nothing, no counsel. one, Mr. Real, Mr. Adnesia, Ms. Schaefer, have any uh, issues, correct? It's up to no. counsel. Okay, thank you. So we'll uh, go into exec and make a decision. How's that? We need a motion, Mayor. We need a motion for uh, executive. To so moved. Opposed. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Do we need a, you want a voice, uh, voice uh, vote, uh, Terry? We need to read the resolution. I'm sorry, Mayor. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Mayor and Council of the State of New Jersey. Uh, the poor public portion of this meeting is hereby adjourn, adjourned in order that the governing body may meet and close private session for approximately 15 minutes to discuss the matter before its, i.e., the hearing for this ABC uh, uh, transfer. Following the conclusion of said closed session, the governing body shall reconvene the open portion of this public to consider any of the matters which may be properly brought before it. The nature and content of the discussion which occurs in closed session shall be made of the public at such time as the need for non-disclosure no longer exists. This resolution shall take effect immediately. All right, Mary, go ahead. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Councilperson Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Kilpatrick? Yes. Lembo? Yes. Melendez? Yes. yes. Thanks, Dan. Chief? Stand in that back room.
basically a transfer application of Snooker's LO. Application.
way to get a copy of uh, the closing thing that the council oh, signed? Oh, I have no idea. Uh, oh, I thought you were on the board. No, I'm just, I'm just giving the whole thing. Uh, more or less. Yeah. I would assume so. Yeah, I mean, it's written down, obviously, because yeah. you read it at uh, Godspeed. <laughs> Steve, I didn't realize that. Oh, they want to expand this. Motion, a motion to go back into open? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Terry, do I need to go into open public portion? Okay. At this time, I'm gonna. Okay. No. Uh, at this time, I'm gonna open the public portion for questions or comments on the Snooker's liquor license uh, waiver. Are there any questions or comments? Being no questions or comments. I move to close the public portion. Second. Roll call. Thank you. Council Persons Novak? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Kilpatrick? Yes. Lembo? Yes. Melendez? Yes. Right. Yeah, now is there a motion to uh, approve or deny uh, the uh, application for a transfer of place to place license from pocket, uh, from pocket to 960 Route 9 South? I'll make that motion. Second. I think they did. That's it's, he's gonna, he's gonna read that. and there. So the there's an application at this point in time, um, and I'll read this um, this little handwritten thing that I've written out. Um, whereas the applicant has requested a, a waiver of the restriction uh, for the um, the the borough ordinance 6-58, uh, whereas uh, uh, nine associates T uh, Berman Street has objected in writing and placed. 
to the place to place transfer, uh, whereas this applicant has been given notice of the objection and the applicant objective have an opportunity to present their position to counsel at the hearing held on May 22, 2017. And whereas the hearing uh, applicant was represented by counsel Samuel, Samuel Real, whereas the objector was represented uh, by James Adnizio, whereas the um, uh, police chief um, uh, has uh, weighed in on the uh, transfer of said. Whereas uh, Ordinance 6 5 8 vests discretion with the Borough Council acting as the ABC issuing authority to waive the 2,000 foot restriction in a reasonable discretion if it is satisfied that such wa waiver will not adversely impact the surrounding area and the public health, safety, and welfare. Uh, now, therefore, be it resolved but that the Borough Council uh, of the Sarahville, after hearing from the applicant, objector, council, and reviewing the police reports and recommendations based upon the following findings. Um, <coughs> The location of additional facility in the area will not have an adverse impact on adjacent residential areas. The proposed location is not in an area where patrons of licensed facilities tend to congregate and or consume alcohol beverages on the adjacent sidewalks. Uh, properties that, that the proposed facility is not of such a type that it may be expected that its patrons may engage in similar inappropriate behavior. The existing premises licensed for uh, plenary retail um, are close from the pro uh, proposed facility. The proposed facility and existing licensed facility have different business models as one primarily sells pr uh, packages goods for off-premises consumption and the other is a tavern designed for on-premises consumption. The proposed location would benefit the commercial development of the shopping center which it's housed. The facility would facilitate redevelopment of the shopping center which currently has several vacant units. The council believes that the approval of this application waiver is otherwise in the public interest and therefore that the place to place transfer application of plenary retail consumption license number 1219-33-043-005 is hereby approved. Um, now with respect to any conditions, um, well once you guys, uh, this is subject to, I guess, uh, if it's my understanding correct, that you would like to have submissions as to conditions to be placed on the transfer. So. Well, Yes. Oh, I just want to, just want to make sure that you didn't leave me away in there, but yes, so that's subject to conditions being so imposed. So I think that I, I kind of hand wrote some of these notes down, and I apologize for um, some of the, the slowness of the readings, but I think that kind of surmises everything. Is that accurate? Is that accurate, Ms. Schaefer? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. We it was okay. So again, this approval of this transfer is subject to conditions that I would ask council to submit um, uh, to the mayor and council for a finding at a later date when the submissions are accepted. Right, we want submissions from council for the objector and council for the applicant as to what sort of conditions they recommend. We'll also, I'll consult with the police chief and uh, we'll okay, put them those, before council those, at the next meeting. Those submissions will be made within 30 days of today's date. He's not to speak. We're, we're in the middle. There, and there's no objection to the we're, Hey, hey, we're right in the middle of reading an ordinance. You were a borough attorney. Please sit down until you're called. I just want to say we consent to the process. Please sit down until you're called. Thank you, Mr. Real. So that's the, uh, the motion uh, on the resolution. Um, I think we had a, a first and we had a second. Uh, now we just need a vote. Are there any comments? Or questions regarding, I think I've kind of covered everything with respect to the under comments, if this if this ordinance is passed, if this, if this resolution is passed and the waiver is granted, I will return it unsigned. I don't think it's beneficial to the borough of Sarahville. If there are no other comments, I'll call for a roll call. <clears throat> Council Persons Novak? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Kilpatrick? Yes. Lembo? No. Melendez? Yes. I think, Mayor, that concludes the agenda for this specific hearing. Okay. I'm going to uh, call for a, uh, a motion to close this meeting. In about 10 minutes, we'll open up the, uh, the regular council meeting. I understand Motion to adjourn. That. Hold on a minute. I haven't finished. Uh, and then we'll open up our regular borough meeting. So that being the Can message, I'll take a message uh, to, uh, to adjourn this meeting.
So moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Council Persons Novak? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Kilpatrick? Yes. Lembo? Yes. Melendez? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor.